This week, we find out who makes the king of the compact impact wrenches. Dewalt in Milwaukee are at it again. And Vince buys a $575 shop stool. This is your Power Tool Week in Review. Today's episode is brought to you by Ohio Power Tool, Pro Tools, Pro Service at the best prices at OhioPowerTool.com. And Flex, it's what's next. Welcome back, Power Tool fans. I'm Rob. And I'm Sarah, and we have a bunch of Power Tool news and reviews to get to, starting with Clint over at the Tool Review Zone, who found the perfect companion to the Milwaukee Baby Chainsaw, the Milwaukee M12 Baby Shop Blower. And yeah, Clint aimed it at his face. But he also gives us a size comparison to a few others, rounds up the accessories, and blows water all over the floor, all in the name of tool review science. So sure, it's small, powerful, and red, but should you get one? I suggest you go watch Clint's video first. For a second week in a row, we caught ourselves staying up late to watch Lamberg Tile TV, a little bit for the tiles and a lot bit for the tools. This week, Mr. Lamberg grabbed the DeWalt 20 volt framing nailer because as he points out, before you can lay a bunch of beautiful tile, you might just have to build a wall or two to hold them up. Now, this is the DCN 692, which isn't new. As a matter of fact, we've seen excellent reviews from the likes of Workshop Attic and several others, and the reviews weren't bad. But since it's been out, a few serious challengers have emerged, specifically from Metabo HPT and Milwaukee, both of which were reviewed back in May by Tools and Stuff. In that review, the DeWalt simply didn't stack up to the others, but Lamberg doesn't know that, and he loved the gun. It had all the power he needed, and it saved a ton of time. Maybe he'll get to try the Metabo HPT in Milwaukee in the near future, but for now, he's found his next investment. For the full review, head over to Lamberg Tile TV. The boys at the Torque Test Channel have been busy. Are they boys? What? The guys at Torque Test Channel, are they boys? Are they all guys? I honestly don't know. Okay, well, if I got that wrong, let me know, TTC. This week, the trio decided that it was time to round up all of the cordless compact impact wrenches and decide once and for all which is the king. This includes the Makita, Rigid, Milwaukee, and DeWalt. The races aren't all that close, and the other contenders seem to let Makita walk right up and take the trophy without a peep. But as the team points out, there's a new DeWalt 20V XR right around the corner, so the Makita may not be bragging for too long. For the full story, head over to Torque Test Channel. Speaking of nameless, faceless people we wish we knew and could see, our buddy from Tools and Stuff shared another Makita XGT review this week, and this time he brought the absolutely terrifying Makita 40 volt XGT 9 inch grinder. If you've never used a 9 inch grinder before, it's an experience. This is a clip of a Metabo demo where we got to use a 9 inch grinder to cut through a guardrail. And I can tell you from experience that if the tool is powerful enough, it drops right through that much steel without a problem. So when I saw there was a new 40 volt XGT 9 inch grinder coming, I immediately stole all the guardrail I could find in anticipation. Tools and Stuff used it to cut through a bit of rebar, which looks absolutely hilarious compared to the size of that disc, but he eventually cut some angle iron too. And of course, this beast is easily up to the task. If you think you can handle a grinder that size, head over to Tools and Stuff. I can always count on Tim at Shout to Reviews to brighten up my day, and this week was no exception. Beepers! That was pretty bad, wasn't it? No, it wasn't, Tim! It was just what we all needed. <laughs> This week he was testing a pair of new hybrid shop lights from Ryobi. The hybrid part refers to the ability to run off either their 18 volt one plus batteries or plug them directly into any 120 volt extension cord, making them both cordless and corded. The PCL630 is a floodlight with 1800 lumens and the 631 has 3000 lumens spread across those three adjustable panels. And it's those panels that makes the 631 a much more interesting solution. Those wings actually protect the lens when it's closed, allows you to aim your light in multiple directions when open, and if you flip them all the way around, it can even sunlight in opposite directions. That's a great way to illuminate an entire room. The thing that surprised me the most was that the 631 is only $10 more. But don't let me tell you which one to get. Obviously, the 631. Just head over to Shop to Reviews for your answer. You don't need me to tell you that Vince is a man that gets the job done. As a retail contractor, he's been solving problems and building solutions for many years. And this week, he felt like all that work entitled him to a better shop stool, which, yeah, I can get on board with that. So he decided to purchase a Viper shop stool, this perfectly over-engineered work of functional art 
for an eye-watering 575 bucks. This glorious shop stool isn't just over-engineered, it's over-built right here in the good old US of A. So, you know, it'll be big enough for our American rear ends. Vince not only walks you through the unboxing, but also lets us watch as he assembles the thing bolt by glorious bolt. Once again, a shop accessory I didn't know I needed, but thanks to Vince, now I do. Does he regret the purchase? Well, you'll have to head over to VCG Construction to find out. Now, warranties are not that exciting, Boring. but they really are important, especially if your power tools are your livelihood. Now, Hilti has one of the industry's most robust warranties, which they refer to as 22 and 1, which refers to 20 years of materials and workmanship, two years of wear and tear, which is insane if you ask me, and one day guarantee repair turnaround. Not freaking bad, Hilti. But of course, a warranty is only worth the paper it's printed on until you put it to use. So Dave over at Man Caver Tools, who recently had a chuck come off of a Hilti drill, decided he'd head over to a local Hilti store in Elmhurst, Illinois, to see if they'd fix the drill. You always hope you don't need to use a warranty, and often when it's time to cash in, things don't always go smoothly. So we were grateful Dave thought to share his experience with us, and the result was refreshing to say the least. You can find the full story over at Man Caver Tools. Our last stop this week is with Jim over at Philly Fixed, who shared the third episode of his ongoing series, Subcompact Showdown. Previously, he's covered the Ryobi HP, Rigid, Metabo, HPT, and Makita. This time, he puts the DeWalt 20-volt atomic subcompact impact driver into the ring with its Milwaukee Pier. The testing includes a lot of, you know, screwing in and screwing out and drilling holes with huge half-inch twist bits. And after adding all the numbers up and filling out the impact charts, the Milwaukee really looks to be dominating the class pretty soundly. It's a lot more expensive than some of the other competitors, but it's the only kit that includes two 2 amp hour batteries, so the pricing appears to be pretty much a wash. But despite the outcome, the video is another excellent opportunity for you to head over and complain about the brands you didn't buy in the comments. Have fun, guys. I want to thank Flex and Ohio Power Tool for sponsoring this episode. Guys, we couldn't do it without you. If you like this episode, give it a thumbs up, and if you loved it, we hope that you subscribe. Do something kind for somebody else this weekend, and we'll see you next week.